Alright, buenos dias, mis amigos. Alright, let me go over uh, a couple of comments here. The first one from Detector Amateur. He says, thanks for making this video. Very good. I came across some people that were claiming that Jesus only came for white people. I disagreed with them and explained with many verses that Jesus came for everyone that believes but these people were also claiming that Jesus is not the right name I also agreed or disagree with this Yeshua thing Jesus is his name yeah absolutely I mean if you do a anybody can do a, a quick word search and see that Yeshua is not mentioned at all in the Bible. So, it, right there, that alone uh, <laughs> destroys the idea that his name is Yeshua. I mean, you're essentially saying you don't believe the Bible at all. If you believe, <laughs> if you say that his name is Yeshua, it's ridiculous, it's stupid, and you really. Uh, I think, in my opinion, you're wasting your time uh, having arguments with people that believe Jesus only came for white people. I mean, that's gone beyond stupid. Uh, that's just total nonsense. Now, of course, it's always good to correct somebody always correct them don't ever leave them in error I mean you're not gonna convince anybody you're not gonna change anybody's mind but never leave them in error okay now Roderick 1983 says 70 AD isn't about a belief Christ is the Antichrist it's right there in plain sight when you read Jesus say this generation shall not pass. It is all about that generation. All about the destruction of Old Covenant being destroyed. Why do you ignore that for a false 2000 year gap generation? And then Decatur Amateur says, Jesus did die and rose from the grave after three days. His body is the temple. This happened even earlier than 70 AD. See, that's the key right there. That's the key. Roderick, 1983, is blind to that and, and blind for a reason. All right, so Roderick, you get mad at me, I don't care, but when you disregard the written word of God, you deserve to be, to be delusional. You deserve to believe a lie. All right, because you do not listen to God. You don't believe the written word of God. And so that's why you and so many others cling to all these nonsensical doctrines that don't square up, line up with the scripture. Okay, Roderick comes back and says, hmm, we know this. Okay, so we... Apparently you are now part of a cult. Is that what you mean when you say we? If you're speaking as a part of a cult, that's what that's the word you use. That's the proper word. We. We members of this ridiculous cult. We know this. Alright. Whereas an individual believer in the Lord Jesus Christ who believes the written word of God would say, I know this. No, you speak as an organization, a cult member, and therefore you speak as a cult member and you say, we, the cult, know this. All right, the subject was about things written for Jerusalem and the Old Covenant. 
Right, so this is a brilliant tactic. I'm not sure if you're even aware of it, Roder. You just you shift the focus, or you shift the conversation left, right, left, right, and uh, you never you're never able to focus. Okay, so you're going from um, where in the the video that I make. I'm putting everything on this idea that Daniel chapter 9 is according to preterist this is talking about the Antichrist that's the center the core of preterism alright Daniel chapter 9 talks about the Lord Jesus Christ makes no mention at all of the Antichrist Daniel not Daniel the book of Daniel makes a lot of mentions about the Antichrist the end of the world the end times Daniel chapter 9 no <clears throat> that's not one of the chapters it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ who will make an end of sins. The Antichrist won't do it. He don't do it. And it's, this has already been fulfilled when Jesus laid down his life. He has put an end of sacrifice and oblations. All right, he has done it all. But preterists, because they don't believe the Bible, have made the Christ of Daniel 9 out to be the Antichrist so that in other words their Christ is the Antichrist All right, so everything they see is delusional alright so now that's the core of preterism and so Roderick you want to change the core into this idea that well this generation is the core alright and then you want to change it from that to Jerusalem and the Old Testament and then move on to Revelation and seven churches and eminent tribulation you're shifting the conversation and you're throwing a bunch of crap on the table and I ain't eating none of it all right <laughs> it's very simple if you are able to get beyond this idea that Daniel 9 is talking about the Antichrist if you actually believe what it says then perhaps your eyes will be opened remember what the angel said to Daniel consider the vision consider it What you do instead, Roderick, and all your and your wees, whoever your wee wees are, you don't consider the vision. Rather, you consider what other like-minded people have to say. It's quite obvious. You disregard the written word of God. It's quite clear. Quite obvious. All right, because first of all, you have to, you have to be honest with yourself, okay? And look at this, and you read the whole. I mean, look. If you go from just 24 down to 27, 24, 25, 26, 27, 24, 25, 26, 27, 24, 25, 26, 27. Just those four verses, and you actually believe those words are from God you're gonna see this is completely contrary to preterism completely four verses so let's read them won't even take won't take five minutes all right follow along <clears throat> all right 70 weeks are determined 
upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish, finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate let's work backwards why not the, that determined shall be poured upon the desolate that's the judgment the wrath of God the consummation also is the judgment this is the good guys all right good guys here bad guys there all right good guys bad guys good guys are when we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord all right I mean <laughs> the I think one thing is important to understand when it comes to scripture is this stuff is repeated over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. The same things. All through Genesis to Revelation, we get consistency all throughout the Bible. Alright, so this consummation is the marriage, if you will, between Christ between God and his people all right so this is when we're changed we're forever married we're, you think of Jesus as the as the bridegroom and the church as the bride so once Jesus comes back then we come together with the Lord and we're changed forever all right change forever that's the consummation <laughs> you know whether you see it or not that's that's on you it's a matter of believing the simple written word of God okay now um, the overspreading of abominations the oblation and sacrifice alright this is all 
the uh, how do I say this? The Old Testament rituals or you know the practices. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you know the Old Testament, you know that they would offer. I mean, even way back at the very beginning, Cain and Abel would make offerings to God. All right, this, so this is not a new thing. <laughs> it's how God made us, right? Okay, so the sacrifices and the oblations that men gave to God to um, be thankful and to be forgiven, right? All of these uh, practices, they are done away with. They were never enough. They were never enough to satisfy God. Well, let's, let's read a verse here. Uh, I think of the. Got to think of the exact wording here. For it is not possible. That the blood of bulls and of goats shall should take away sins. Okay, so these sacrifices and oblations and the overspreading of abominations, these were never enough. They were never enough to take away sins. They were never enough. But Jesus, which is God manifest in the flesh, which was God manifest in the flesh. He laid down his life. He became the sacrifice that was possible to take away sins. All right, the, the whole New Testament is based on that. Jesus laid down his life. And therefore, the sacrifice, oblation, abomination, or overspreading abomination, that, all that's done away with now. Because he has done it all. That's the promise that he made, and that's the promise that holds true today. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. That's when he was killed. That's when he was killed, but not for himself. He didn't die for himself, did he? He died for us. Isn't that true? You know that's true. He died for us all. Not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Right? Messiah cut off but not for himself he did it for us man. he did it for us you don't know that you didn't know that Roderick 1983 I mean sometimes you gotta question what these people that reject the written word of God you gotta question what they're teaching you got to question what they believe. And I would never tie myself in with a bunch of group of people that don't believe the Bible. Well, what's the matter with you, man? And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The people of the prince. Who's that? That's the Jews, isn't it? Who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. Who? The Jews. The people of the prince. You don't see that? It's right there in front of your face, man. And you still can't see it. And the people of the prince shall come, destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. 
and unto the end of the war desolations are determined okay the end of the war end of the world end of this earth the end of this life the end of all things evil it's, all of it's coming to an end and this is why we put our hope into a new world an everlasting world wherein dwelleth righteousness okay let's go back up know for or know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks three score two weeks okay to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince this is the temple all right just as we read um, in John chapter 2 um, I guess we'll just do it this way I don't know uh, let me see is this am I in the right place here I don't know I don't know where it's at maybe I'm in the wrong place no it's right here Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will rise, raise it up to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince. Alright. Destroy <clears throat> this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. See, the Jews, they didn't understand. And apparently... Roderick 1983 doesn't understand either. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple and building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the body. Uh, I'm sorry, but he spake of the temple of his body. Know ye not? Know ye not that the temple, or wait a second, am I doing that right? Uh, goodness sakes. Know ye not that the, oh, okay. All right, so I don't know nothing. I don't, I don't know. Don't you know? I don't know. I don't know either. Know ye not, know ye not that the, here, I better just do it this way, I'm trying to get it right, I'm trying to get it exactly right. Know ye not that ye, oh there it is, ye, know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? So you're attributing everything to a physical when you should be seeing things in the spiritual. If you had eyes to see. This here, to rest the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, that's Jesus tearing down the temple and then rebuilding the temple not as it is now the temple that we're in this temple is no good that he has promised to or he has I should say rebuilt the temple he has already done it and then he's promised to return for us all right, let's real quickly. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, where it says, "Behold, I show you a mystery. 
We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. This is the new temple that we look forward to. This is the new temple that Jesus has rebuilt for us. All right, he's rebuilt this temple. He's ascended to heaven with the promise to return for us. All right, real quickly, let's go to John chapter 14. Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Alright, so, in my Father's house are many mansions. You guys can't figure this stuff out? Alright, the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, to, re to, to restore and to build Jerusalem, to restore and to build who? Jerusalem. Where's Jerusalem? It's over there in the Middle East with the perverts and the faggots and all those kind of guys? No. Jerusalem is above. Galatians 4, verse 26. Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. John 14, in my Father's house are many mansions. Right? Jerusalem, which is above, in my Father's house are many mansions. Right? And then we go to, <laughs> I mean, this is unbelievable. We go to, let's go to Revelation 21. What do we read in Revelation 21 exactly? Well, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first, the first earth that was passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, new Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven. Jerusalem, coming down, out of heaven. Jerusalem, which is above is free in my father's house are many mansions go to Daniel chapter 9 you can't figure this out to the commandment to restore and to build to build Jerusalem you can't figure that out it's more than obvious it's more than obvious there seriously there's something wrong with your heart if you can't see it man and I'm telling you the reason why people don't see it is because they don't believe the written word of God. Because they don't believe there is a veil upon their heart. This stuff is right there in plain sight. There's no reason, no excuse at all. You've got no excuse for not seeing this. No, there's no reason at all for you not to see it. You're born of God and you can't see it? Uh, bull butter. That's not possible. It's it's more than obvious. Right, the, to restore and to build Jerusalem under the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again. The wall, even in troublous times. You don't see it? Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. I am the way. Jesus is the way. He is come he is God come into our flesh. He laid down his life and brought it back up, ascended to heaven, and we're gonna follow him. We that are born of God, that is. Right? He is the way. He is he has paved the way 
He is the street. He has made the way for us. <laughs> and the wall, and even in troublous times. Uh, he has led us. Enter in the straight way. Here, let me see if I can figure this one out. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in there at. Alright. What's the next verse say? Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads unto life and few there be that find it Jesus is the way the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times Jesus has led the way for us again God is manifest in the flesh. Now let's go to that verse. Let's go to that verse. God manifest in the flesh. Manifest in the flesh. God came into our body. God came into our body and did every all the works necessary. All the works so there's no works, no more works that we need to do. There was never any works that we could have done anyways. So glory be to God, thanks be to God that he has came into our flesh and done all the works necessary for eternal life. Where am I at? For and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, God was manifest in the flesh. God came into our body. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Right? God has led the way for us. All we have to do is follow him. All right. That's all we ever could do. We could never ever do it ourselves. There's only one worthy and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, I mean this stuff is really, it's straightforward if you think about it. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. Jesus did that, didn't he? And to make reconciliation for iniquity. Jesus did that, didn't he? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And to bring in everlasting righteousness it's Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And to seal the vision of prophecy and anoint the most holy. It's Jesus. Alright. I, I appreciate it. Appreciate the, the comments, Roderick. Uh, he said something about generation. Um... I thought, let me find it. It's not about this, it's about the other thing. And then when I address the other thing, oh, it's not about that, it's about this other thing. It's all about that generation. There you go. Hey, let's try to make this simple. I mean, a, a great study would be on this word generation. All right, 206 mentions, and we see here. In the New Testament, only 38. Be great study. It would be. It is, actually. It is. 
I should say. Let's go look at this one particular verse. It, uh, these are both the same. They're parallel. Okay. Let's look at Luke chapter 3, verse 7. O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? It's quite incredible. Here we got all the way from Genesis, all throughout the Bible, over and 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 over, and over all the way through Revelation. Warning us of the wrath to come. The wrath of God that is coming at the end of the world. Genesis 3 verse 15. The Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. We get this echo, this prophecy echoed all throughout the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. There's a coming end of the world. The wrath of God. The foot of God is going to stomp on the head of the evil, destroying evil forever. Now, all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible, where we are. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come. So they are fleeing from being unsaved, unjustified, want, now wanting to be saved, to be baptized, to be justified. All right. It's pretty simple stuff, man. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? There's a coming end of the world. There's a coming wrath of God that's going to be poured upon the whole world. Even Daniel 9 talks about it. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. This world's coming to an end. This world will come to an end. Alright, so Luke chapter 3 verse 7 It's mind-numbingly stupid, in my opinion, in my heartfelt, humble opinion. It's incredibly stupid. To look at that verse, and suggest that this generation of vipers it was only from what 33 AD to 70 AD and that the wrath to come happened at 70 AD uh, you really it's hard I can't take you serious man I can't take you serious at all cannot I cannot fathom anybody so stupid I can't I, I just can't imagine somebody that is being serious all right suggesting that this generation has already passed I, I can't I can't take you serious man can't take you serious. That generation is from the time of Jesus to the time of the wrath to come. The thousand years of Revelation 20 is the same generation. All right. There's no way, there's no way to make this argument and to make it stick. There's no way. And I don't think you, you guys are being honest at all. 
I don't think you take anything serious. You're a bunch of clowns, a bunch of kids, just clowning around. And you, I can't take you serious. I don't believe you take yourself serious. I really don't. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Like, learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and puts forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. So what happens? Well, 29 through 31 is what happens, okay? 29 through 31. But what's the context of this? Well, the context is the disciples come to Jesus and ask the Lord, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? That's the context. And at the end of the world, what happens? The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Let's go to Revelation chapter 1 real quick. Real quick. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye, every eye shall see him. And they also, they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so amen without a doubt without a doubt this has not happened but without a doubt this is going to happen guaranteed I would like to be standing next to you when it does because I want to see the look on your face because you this whole time I'm claiming this already happened this happened long 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 time ago the world came to an end a long long time I mean it's beyond stupid but I want to see that stupid look on your face when you see the Lord Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven I want to see it I want to be standing next to you looking at you right square in the face and see the shock and the horror that is in your eyes because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Guarantee it. And all the kindreds of the year shall wail. They're going to be horrified. Absolutely horrified. And you're going to be standing with them horrified as well. Because all this time you're claiming that this already happened. Well, this happened in 70 AD for absolutely no reason at all. And therefore, we got all these New Testament books, including the book of Revelation, which are all written in vain, have no purpose whatsoever. It's already done. Everything, it's already happened. It's like a story. It's like a Harry Potter book to you, isn't it? You're just laughing and giggling with your buddies, thinking this has already happened. But yet, when it happens, it's going to freak you out, man. It's going to freak you you out. Let's go to Luke 21 real quick. Real quickly. Because this is the same event here in Luke 21 that's being described here. Alright, so let's go, uh, let's start right here. There shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and upon earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear. Men's hearts failing them for fear because they thought this already happened in 70 AD. Oh, well, this all this happened, and what's going on now? What's going on? Although earth shall wail because of him, men's hearts failing them. Yeah, it's gonna happen. That's why I say I like to be there because I've had to endure this S8 crap this whole time. Listen to you false preachers, one after another. 
preach this nonsense. Oh, this has already happened. It, but yet, when it does happen, you're in for the shock of your life. Yeah. Guaranteed it.